we've all heard of genes, and most genes encode proteins. So, so there are proteins which give the cell its integrity, hold the cell together. There are proteins that make enzymes that help you digest food and metabolize food. Um, they're the workhorses of the cell. But surprisingly enough, the genome, only 2% of the genome codes for protein coding genes. The rest is non-coding genome. Because most of the function is unknown, um, it's colloquially, been colloquially called the dark matter of the, uh, of the genome. Well, about a year and a half ago, Michael Taylor um, brought a really surprising piece of data, data to me. Uh, they had uh, completed some whole genome sequencing on a series of uh, uh, childhood brain cancers, and it found a uh, unknown mutation in uh, a large number of them, and it was in a very unexpected place. Uh, it was located in the dark matter of the genome. I didn't believe it for a second that it was a real, that this was a real finding. I thought it was an instrumentation error. Um, but uh, I, um, I thought it was interesting enough to try to uh, either confirm or disprove. And to do this, I went to my graduate student and asked him to look for this mutation in other tumor types. So in course of an afternoon, his uh, software interrogated nearly 3,000 cancer genomes. And to everyone's surprise, not only did he find the mutation again in the same type of brain cancer that Hero had found, but we found it in multiple other tumor types. So the gene is called U1. And it's very interesting because it's a very small gene, and it's a gene that's been conserved over the last billion years of evolution. So it's a gene that's the same in you, it's the same in everybody's pets, it's the same in what you had for lunch. So it really hasn't changed much in the last billion years here on planet Earth. As I said, it's short, it's only about 170 letters long, and the change, particularly in the brain tumors, is only one letter change. But by changing one letter, you have the cell go berserk and become cancer. So if you have a brain tumor that has a mutation in U1, because your cell proofreading system is all messed up, you now have a whole bunch of aberrant instructions that code for aberrant proteins. We think that means that if we use the immune system, we might be able to treat these patients. In the very short term, we would use drugs that we already use at sick kids for some other patients, where it just turns up the volume on the immune system. It's like telling the immune system, it's okay, go wild. And we hope when we do that, the T cells and the B cells, particularly the T cells, will start killing tumor. In the long term, though, we'd like to look at the individually mutated proteins and make a vaccine so that after someone has surgery for medulloblastoma, we could give them a vaccine so that it would never, ever come back.